So I've gone ahead and I've created uh, two more students, uh, student T and student U, uh, Bob, and I've actually created another one that looks very eerily similar to me. In fact, pretty much is. Well, what if I wanted to see if this student is the same student as this guy? Well, if we think about strings for a second, strings, uh, you might have noticed we, we couldn't just do this equals equals to. It always freaked out. Now, okay, you know, if I tried it with, say, for example, s to t, s to t is okay, relatively speaking, because, you know, uh, Adam is not equal to Bob, so I do get a false. But what happens if I try and do the exact same thing with s and u? Again, this atom and this atom, everything's the same about them. So it should be true, right? Wrong, because we're starting to make more complex data types. So what we're doing is suddenly we're saying, is this memory address the same as this memory address? I'm not looking at the contents yet. This is actually where we overwrite another method that comes from object. And this is actually known as equals. What equals does is, you know, by the generic side of it, if we just think about the objects version of it, it pretty much looks at the object, sees if they're equal to each other. This is what happens when we do the equals equals. But since we're now designing out a complex data type, we have to explicitly state what about these two things is going to be equal. So public boolean equals and then I still tell it it's an object. And I say object instead because I have to double check. I have to make sure that what I'm looking at is explicitly what I'm talking about. So first thing I need to do is, all right, well, uh, is this student the same as this student? I need to probably look to make sure that they are the same they are, you know, whatever this object is, this object O, I should probably see if it is an instance of, notice how it changes, student, student, student. Because now this is going to tell me if it's true or false or not. If it's not, else return false because it doesn't matter. It's not a student, so I clearly know that it doesn't, it, it's not correct. But if it is a student, again, that means that it's gonna have an ID, it's gonna have a balance, it's gonna have courses, it's gonna have a name, an address, phone, email. Well, again, if we think about it, the student ID is that unique identifier for all Cape Fear Community College people. So if this is a student, then what I have to do is I can say, well, return this dot ID dot, now I'll even kind of clean this up a little bit. So string, how do I want to build this up? Well, first I'll go ahead and make a, a student, student, uh, new student. Because right now it's an object. Again, if you need, we're going to need to do explicit casting on my object to make sure that it is the same thing. And so now that I have this sort of a buildup, let's see. One of the things I'm going to also need to do is I'm going to need to write a getter because, again, these are private. So I need to have some way of accessing some other object's version. So I'm going to public. Uh, string get ID return this dot ID now what I can do is I can say uh, does this dot ID my string dot equals new student dot get ID Again, what am I doing here? And I'll, just so we can think about that, ID. ID is this guy. It's no different than me doing any other string. Name, 
dot equals get name ID this dot ID equals does it equal the student this student I just created I explicitly casted give me his ID give me his ID and if it is cool so now all of a sudden well, again I still can't do this I still can't do uh, equals equals that's not gonna work still get false but what I can do is I can say dot equals you does s does student s equal student u and since they have the same id this is going to be true again because they have the same id